الله الرحمن الرحيم المالك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار الله الرحمن الرحيم المالك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to this episode about the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, in this uh, episode we are going to take the last two attributes of Allah mentioned in the hadith transmitted by Imam Tirmidhi. The attribute number 98 which is Ar-Rashid, the guide to the right paths and the 99, As-Sabur, the patient one. Now let us take the first one which is Ar-Rashid. Ar-Rashid which is coming from the word Rushd. Rushd is the guidance. And who is the source of that guidance? None but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the people to receive that guidance. وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِي فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ And when the people ask you about me, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them that I am very near. I respond to the person who calls me. So let them turn back to me, let them have faith in me, لَعَلَّهُمْ يرشدون, so that they can have the guidance. And in the same way, the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, مَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُحْتَدِ مَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُحْتَدِ وَمَنْ يُذْلِلْ فَلَنْ تَجِدَ لَهُ وَلِيًّا مُرْشِدًا the one who is guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the real person who can say that he is guided. And if someone is led, then nobody can guide him. So it means that the guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, even the misguidance, that is according to the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows both paths, path of guidance and path of misguidance. It is up to the man when he exercises his will and takes one step to the guidance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps him. Amma man aata wa taqa wa saddaqa bil husna fasan wa yassiruhu lil yusra wa amma man bakhila wa stagna wa kathaba bil husna fasan wa yassiruhu lil usra. That is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person who gives who got the fear of Allah, the person who verifies, who believes in Al-Husna, it means Al-Aqibat Al-Husna, the good end which is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَسَنُ يَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى We are going to make for him the path easy towards Al-Jannah. On, on the other hand, the person who becomes a miser, a niggardly person, and then he shows that he is independent. And then he does not believe in al-husna. That is the end with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does not believe in al-akhirah. We will make the path for him a very narrow path, a very difficult path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of the guidance. He wants you to be guided. This is why he has sent all the messengers. He has sent our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the best guidance and that is the guidance of Al-Quran. He wants you to be guided. Why did he create the heavens wider than the heaven and the earth put together? Why did he create that paradise? ثَابِقُوا إِلَىٰ جَنَّةٍ أَرْضُهَا كَأَرْضِ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ This is why? Because Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wants you to get into that Al-Jannah. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of, of guidance. Now, this word is used, uh, the word rushd, in many ayat of the Quran. For example, let us take uh, first uh, from Surah Al Jinn. قُلْ أُوْهِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا يَهْدِي إِلَى الرُّشْدِ فَآمَنَّا بِهِ وَلَنْ نُشْرِكَ بِرَبِّنَا أَحَدًا Say that it has been revealed to me that a group from al-jinn listened to al-Quran and then they said we have listened to a wonderful al-Quran a very wonderful recitation, Yahdi il rushd which is guiding to a rushd to the right path, to the real guidance. So we believed in that, and we are not going to associate with God anyone. So this this is the word a rushd coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now let us take uh, uh, this word which is used in a different context. That is the saying of Pharaoh the Pharaoh. When he said that he is, he is the one who can guide. What did he say? He said, مَا أُرِيكُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَرَى وَمَا أَهْدِيكُمْ إِلَّا سَبِيلَ الرَّشَادِ He is telling to his people after Musa al-Islam approached Bani Israel. He approached the Pharaoh with the guidance. He said to the people that what I see that is uh, the real or the reality and I am just leading you to the path of guidance وَمَا أَهْدِيكُمْ إِلَّا سَبِيلَ الرَّشَادِ because but he was wrong he was telling he was not telling the truth who was telling the truth one person from among the people of Pharaoh who came running and then he gave a very good speech in the court of Pharaoh that person who was a believer, he said these words. وَقَالَ الَّذِي آمَنَ يَا قَوْمِ اتَّبِعُونِ أَهْدِكُمْ سَبِيلَ الرَّشَادِ He said to the Pharaoh and all his courtiers, the person who believed, he said, O oh my people, follow me. I am going to guide you to the right paths. And that was the saying of all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Telling the people that if you want to follow the right path, then follow us. For example, the saying of Shu'aib, alayhi salam, one of the prophets of Allah, he said, In uridu illa al islaha mastatat, wa ma tawfiqi illa billah, alayhi tawakkaltu wa ilayhi unib. In uridu illa al islaha mastatat. What is my duty? I just want to to amend the matters, al-islah, to reconcile among the people, to do something which is good. Remember that uh, the word salah is to do good. And the opposite of that word is al-fasad, to corrupt in the land. To corrupt in the land. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used this word, zahar al-fasad fil barri wal bahr. Bima kasabat nas. The corruption has appeared in the land, in the sea. Why? Because of the earning of the people themselves. So when the word salah is used, islah is used, that is against the word fasad. Whatever is against the scheme of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is going to corrupt the land. And whatever is according to the scheme of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is going to correct it. This is why we say that al-Islam, Islam is to create islah, to, to make uh, this, this world a, a haven of peace. Unlike those people who don't follow the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they want to turn it into a land of corruption. And if you think more about this fact, you can see that, yes, there are civilized people living on this world. They say that they are civilized. And they have invented so many things for the benefit of the mankind. 
Yes, as far as this this world is concerned, they have done so many things good. But when it comes to the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they fail. They don't want to abide by it. And this is how they are going to corrupt this land with immorality, with obscenity, with injustice, with killing, with murders, the incidents of rape, theft, robberies, just not the robbery of one, uh, one individual, the robbery of the whole nation, attacking a nation, attacking another nation to rob them from all the means of their livelihood or because of uh, those means which are not available, available to the attacker, they want to take it from the people whom they attack. Is it not the case? The battles are being fought just for oil and people just try to conceal their motives that we want to, we want to uh, bring democracy, for example. We want to let the people understand how to govern themselves. When they know, and they know it perfectly, that the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best system if it is implemented. The Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which provides for the poor and the needy that great system of zakat, if it is implemented in its entirety, it is going to meet the demands of all the people living in a country. Because when you take uh, the zakat money from the rich people and then you provide it to the poor people and the needy people, you will see that how it works. It has worked in the past. Why should it not work now in the present? And in the very same way, though the punishments or the penal code in Sharia seem to be very harsh, but if it is implemented, it becomes deterrent for the people. You don't see many people, uh, their, their, their hands are going to be cut because of theft, because it is such a deterrent that if one person who got uh, or who received that punishment, that is going to deter all other people. Anyhow, this, uh, this topic is a vast topic. We were just discussing that the guidance, that the guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is a Rashid. He is the guide to the right paths. Now we are heading towards the break. And after the break, we are going to discuss about another attribute of Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah al-Rahman al-Rahim Al-Malik al-Quddus al-Salam Al-Mu'min al-Muhaymin al-Aziz al-Jabbar Back to the Prophet Join Sheikh Amar in the program Back to the Prophet wherein he teaches us practical lessons from the Prophet's life and how this can help us to overcome our challenges in the present. We talk about the life example of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Seeking guidance for ourselves. In the early days after the revelation of the Holy Quran, the Muslims were greatly persecuted. So much so that quite a few Muslims had to leave Arabia and migrate to Africa to live among Ahl Kitab, Christian people who followed the Gospel of Christ. Allah Rahman Rahim, Al Malik Al Quddus Al Salam, Al Mu'min Al Muhaymin Al Aziz Al Jabbar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now we are coming to the end of uh, this series about the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last attribute of Allah which is mentioned in the hadith transmitted by At-Tirmidhi, number 99, As-Sabur 
the patience. As-sabur, which is coming from as-sabr. As-sabr, which is the patience. In what sense Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as-sabur? In this sense that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do, He sees the people committing the sins, transgressing the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But still, He is not hasty in punishing them. He is patient. And as we have said earlier, he got that sunnah, that way of Allah, that he gives respite to the people. Gives them time. Let them repent. Let them ask for forgiveness. Let them turn back to the deen of Allah. He gives them times again and again. But still they don't come back. Then and only then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala catches them. And this is what is explained in this ayah of Surah Al-Nahl. وَلَوْ يُؤَاخِذُ اللَّهُ النَّاسَ بِظُلْمِهِمْ مَا تَرَكَ عَلَيْهَا مِنْ دَابَّةِ وَلَكِنْ يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُصَمَّةٍ فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَاخِرُونَ صَعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ If Allah SWT has taken the people because of their injustice, He did not have left even a single animal, a single soul living on this planet. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delays them to an appointed terms. And then when that terms come, nobody is going to be given a respite even for a moment. Nobody is going to be delayed or expedited of that appointment. And in the very same way in Surah Al-Kahf, وَرَبُّكَ الْغَفُورُ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ لَوْ يُؤَاخِذُهُمْ بِمَا كَسَبُوا لَعَجَّلَ لَهُمُ الْعَذَابِ بَلْ لَهُمْ مُعِدٌ لَنْ يَجِدُوا مِنْ دُونِهِ مَوْئِلًا وَتِلْكَ الْقُرَىٰ أَحْلَكْنَاهُمْ لَمَّا ظَلَمُوا وَجَعَلْنَا لِمَحْلِكِهِمْ مَوْعِدًا And your Lord is forgiving and merciful. If he has to catch the people because of their sins, he could have hastened to punish them. No, but there is an appointment and there is no escape for them from that appointment. These are the towns we have destroyed because the people have done wrong. وَجَعَلْنَا لِمَحْلِكِهِمْ مُعِدًا and we have made an appointment for their destruction. So that is the meaning of a sabur. There is another meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives you how to have patience. He is the giver of the patience to the human beings. الَّذِي يُلْحِمُ الصَّبْرَ يُلْحِمُ الصَّبْرَ لِعِبَادِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives the patience to the people. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this as a commandment. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa attaqu allaha la'allakum tuflihun. O believers have sabr, have patience. And then sabiru, that another type of steadfastness when you are meeting the enemy. وَرَابِتُوا Guard, guard the frontiers of, of your states. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ And have fear of Allah if you want success. You are going to be successful for that. Allah SWT has declared uh, the month of fasting as the month of patience. أَصَّوْمُ شَهْرُ الصَّبْرِ the fasting means the month of fasting is the month of patience. What type of patience? Because patience is of three types. Patience upon as-sabru ala al-makarih. The patience upon things you don't like. As-sabru ala ta'at. The patience upon the acts of obedience. As-sabru ala al-masaib. The patience upon the afflictions. As-sabru ala ta'at 
the patience upon uh, the acts which are demanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like like the prayer, like the fasting, zakat and hajj. Yes, you need that patience. And patience here it means that for example for fajr prayer you are not ready to leave your, uh, your comfortable bed but you say to your nafs have patience, stand up, do wudu and go for the prayer. You are forcing your nafs to, to stand up and offer that prayer. That is patience. In the very same way, our, the nafs does not want to keep away from food, from drink during, uh, during the day in the month of fasting. But you are telling to your nafs, no, you can't eat, you can't drink until the breakfast time. This is again a sign of patience. In the very same way, you can say the same thing about giving zakat, same thing about al-hajj, same thing about so many other things. This is as-sabru al-ta'at. The second type is as-sabru al-ma'asi. Patience upon the sins, because the nafs dictates you to do something bad. For example, uh, committing adultery, for example, uh, drinking wine. Many, many things which are just sins. So you say to the nafs, no, don't do that. This is your patience. You always stop your nafs from committing a sin. This is how you control yourself. And as-sabru al-masaib, those afflictions which happen to you, adversaries, at that time you always show patience, you don't cry. You just say that this is the qada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how you show your patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ السَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُحْتَدُونَ We are going to try you with something of the hunger and the decrease in the fruits and the money, your wealth and also the decrease in the souls, the death of the souls. That is going to happen to you. That is a trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبَشِّرِ السَّابِرِينَ but give the good news to those people who show patience. Whenever any, anything of this type happens to them, any calamity happens to them, what do they say? They simply say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi raji'un. We are for Allah and we are going to back to Allah. By saying this, by showing this patience, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ Upon them are the blessings of Allah and the mercy of Allah and they are the people who are guided. This is, this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is giving you how to have patience, how to show patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to, to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Wasbir wa illa billah. Have patience. And this patience is only coming with Allah, from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, فَاصْبِرْ كَمَا صَبَرَ أُولُ الْعَزْمِ مِنَ الرُّسُلِ Have patience, like the patience of the messengers of resolutions, the great messengers who are known to be as Sayyidina Adam alayhi uh, salam, starting from Nuh, Nuh alayhi salam, and Ibrahim alayhi salam, and then Musa alayhi salam, and then Isa alayhi salam, and then our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these five are known to be ulu al-azmi min al-rusul, the messengers with great resolution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salam, inna wajadnahu sabira, we have found him the most patient one. Because Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salam, though he complained to Allah by saying, inni masani al-shaytanu bin nusbin wa adab, that the Satan has touched me with pain and with uh, torment. But he was pleased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and this is why he did not wail and cry he just turned to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his patience and this is how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared him as the one with patience inna wajadnahu sabira and when we are coming to the end of this program let me say this dua in the end for me for you for everyone allahumma inni abduka wa ibnu abdik wa ibnu amatik nasiyati bi yadik madhin fi hukmuk qad adl fi qadauk اسالك بكل اسم هو لك سميته نفسك او انزلته في كتابك او علمته احدا من خلقك او استاثرت به في علم الغيب عندك ان تجعل القران العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا وجلاء همومنا واحزاننا what a good dua is it is you are saying to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh allah i am the son of your slave man i am the son of your slave woman my forehead is in your hands in me your judgment has to pass in me your decree is just i ask you through all those names which belong to you those names you have named yourself or you have brought them down in your book or you have teach them any of your creatures or you have preferred them to be with you in the unseen in the knowledge unseen i ask you through all these names to make al quran to declare al quran the spring of our hearts rabi aqulubina and the light of our breast of our breast wa noor sudurina wa jala humumina wa ahzanina and the removal of all our worries and all our pains may allah accept this prayer from us and with this i ask for your permission ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الله الله الله, الله الرحمن الرحيم الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار الله الله الرحمن الرحيم الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار